All right, so oh. new Bobcat already has 50 hours on. That's when we need to change the break-in oil. So we're gonna change this because now on those, it's a 13, ain't it? No, it's not a deep <laughs> side. And uh, also going to replace the tires on the back here that are shot, hole in it. This one's flat. Maze it's still on the rim. That's good, Brody. A little higher? No, that's good. He's out removing rocks from a fence line on one of the black bean fields. So you're going to change the oil on this and send this out there to clean up after him. Is there any oil in there? It sure is slow flow, ain't it? Give her some air. Oh, that's going to take a while. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> that's really slow. You know, <laughs> my headache of the morning, whoever decided how to route that little drainage tube for the engine oil on this, you either need more sleep or change your diet or do something to be smarter. <laughs> he loves tire work. It's too bad you're the best at it. At least they're small. <laughs> they're harder to do. Yeah, the smaller they are, the tougher they are to uh, get off the rim and back on the rim. The fight is on. He's got them loose. I'm going to put compressed air on this. Oh, my. Don't blow anything up. The day better start going better. The valve stem has core, valve core has snapped off inside of the stem. That's maybe why the tire's tread isn't wearing evenly. Well, we're going to head out to the field. Eric headed down there and said, we need the payloader and the dump cart. So me and Brody are heading down there now. Let's see what we get into. Well, I don't like this. The warning light just came on and said battery voltage. It's got 23.4 volts. I'm gonna assume the alternator ain't working. I wonder how far I'll make it. I show up and big Swedes on lunch break apparently. <laughs> yeah. So basically we got an old abandoned township road here that goes to nowhere, a lake that has been abandoned as I said. And previous owner or renter, previous renter of this farm before Dan and Randy bought it quite a few years ago. Piled the rocks in the road ditch while we're getting rid of them because we don't want our equipment to get damaged on them. So. We are going to be hauling them to a rock pile in an area that will never be farmed. Should uh, be pretty straightforward. Just gonna Eric's gonna sift them, and he's gonna push them into my bucket. And since I have the reach, I'm gonna load the dump cart. He's gonna haul them away to the pile. Well, since he's on dinner break, I'm gonna look at my alternator. See what's going on. Ah. Imagine that. You suppose that could be the issue right there? I would imagine. Chuck. Well, that's inconvenient. That couldn't have happened before I'd left the farm. Be an easy fix. I just need a new end. Well, I had the quick run home to grab a, what, five cent connector. Probably like $10 in gas to get there and back for this, but it is what it is and I need it and we're gonna get her fixed up here and then I can actually get involved in helping. Yeah. You know, that took me a little bit to realize why my arm was Feeling like there's electricity shooting through me. This is hot, so when you touch that and touch this, 
gives you like a nine volt battery on your tongue. Doesn't that look professional? Don't mind the arcing, sparking. <laughs> wasn't there, me. There was some shrieking, wasn't there? Yeah, that happened. You're scared. I would be too. <laughs> There's just something about electricity when it starts arcing that really drives the fear it's of never, God through it's you. Never good. <laughs> Is this yours? I don't. It's Eric's. Would be just like him to leave his water around. See him walk out with it. So we're now attacking another rock pile here that got started and added to and it actually is in the road ditch or what used to be the road ditch and actually is backing water up upstream. So we're, me and dad are kind of pushing it out of the ditch and Eric's sorting them, sifting the dirt out. So we're just kind of taking bucket bowls and spreading them out, making a massive mess for Eric to clean up. I'm sure he's loving that. But basically, it's mostly, you know, half rock, half dirt. So, I'm just going to make a big mess. Well, this is a, a change of day. It's downpouring. What are we going to do? We're going to get trapped out here. Keep her going. We're almost done with this spot. Do the windshield when I back up. Dad's pickup sitting in the other end of the field. Like, we better use our heads here and get that out of here shortly. Fortunate for the rain, I'm glad of it, no doubt we need this and then some. Well, we're gonna call uh, this project quits for the day. We're not done there, but I don't, none of us wanna mud everything up. So before the sticky trash that's on the tires turns into sticky mud, we're fleeing. Hopefully tomorrow we can come back and finish maybe. Well, welcome back, new day. We caught about a half inch of rain last night, which is good. Rip, leave the toad alone. There's Ripper. Remember the little uh, golden retriever? Yeah, you're a big golden retriever now. Brody. It's a nice day for this. Beautiful. Good weather, it's cool. Shields are junk. Yeah. No. And it keeps people, animals like this, Young puppies from getting their noses in stuff, though. I don't know if this is going to fit, so... Everything's so tight. So, I haven't shown you... And honestly, I haven't even been up there to see what they've all been doing. So we're going to go up, look at the double runs that they put up. Connecting the bends, and then the uh, catwalk platforms. So, this is the view I get till my thighs burn. This is a lot of steps. Look at this. This is like the ultimate stair step machine. Whew. All right, just a five minute break to catch the breath so that I can talk to you guys. I don't know if you can see that. That is one of our 70,000 bushel bins. There's our other one. So actually this pipe, which they had to make new, that comes from the grain leg to go to this double run when the tornado came through and the wet bend that's right there left. These pipes ended up on top of those roofs. That roof is totaled out. That one's also severely damaged. That one's usable, this one is not. The band roof is here, or it is at our dealer, but no one to install it just because they are working on other jobs and you know when storm damage comes through they already have their summers booked and planned for their work and so hopefully maybe late fall or winter time they'll get a roof on there we're not sure if we're gonna fill that bin 
right before they come so they work off the top of the grain or if they're gonna have to get lifts or something to do it I don't know we will find out in the future but that band probably will not be getting used this year just because it's not watertight that one can be used so we are on top of our existing 180,000 bushel bin now before we had an 8 inch double run coming up this roof to fill this bin we wanted to upsize to 10 inch because 8 inch wasn't big enough for our grain dryers in 19% corn or so I kids still can't breathe so we upgraded this to 10 inch and added this other 10 inch that goes to the new 200,000 bushel bin so when we did all the changes they designed it and got these new Brock double runs is what I call them um, so now grain will come up in here dump into here and then it will travel to the other bin and if you want to dump into the bin I'm standing on this you'll be able to turn from the ground the cables go down the side of the bin and it'll just drop right through you won't have to run this auger so that's how that's set up should be uh, pretty straightforward um, like I had said before we did not put a ladder like what I just walked up and got my butt kicked by we did not do that for a couple of reasons number one very expensive to have that ladder system second reason is climbing that ladder is not so much fun so once you're up here you just want to go from one to the other so Pro Steel, our dealer, put this ladder system up and a little catwalk right across. So I will walk over there and show you that. First time on it. You know, that's always kind of the scary little walk across here. But this is uh, the walkway from one bend to the other. I'm not a fan of heights. I really am not. Okay, we've made it. We're good. You guys with me? Okay, so they put this lower platform to match the eave height. Another just uh, six or eight steps up to the new grain bin, which I've also not been on top of. And this has a really nice ladder system. Nice handrail. Oh, I can dig this. This also really makes a lot of noise in the wind, so we're gonna have to come up here when it's a windy day, find where it's whistling and wrap some duct tape or cock some holes shut to find out. It's really annoying on the yard listening to that, but oh, this is a cool view. Here's the uh, electric motor that's gonna run the double run that comes from where we were just over there. So it's all connected. We're up and running as soon as the electrician finishes. They wired all this on the ground and it actually runs along these pipes back to there where there's already power. So they just got to connect everything and she'll be up and running here shortly. The yard looks so much different. As soon as those Sioux bends are out of here, that'll clean up the, uh, the majority of the storm damaged stuff. But uh, still not sure what we're doing with that yet. And uh, no time anymore. We're, we're looking at harvest in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks and soybeans will be dang close. We'll be finishing black beans. We're still waiting to desiccate that last 200 acres. But I'm thinking once we're done with uh, black beans, it'll pretty much be rolling right into soybean harvest. Oh, I love this view. I do really dig this uh, ladder staircase on the top of the new bin. This is nice. Oh, I can feel my hamstrings tightening up though. It's time to get in shape. Should start running this every uh, every morning. Get the leg workout in. Duggo definitely should. It's like a giant hamster pen just fun to run around on back down on the ground I was just up there right there 
see it. So this is a cool feature of this bin that I'd look into if you're building a bin is side unload into a conveyor back to your site, your overhead or whatever, however you unload so that you get even samples of grain coming out. It mixes in the FM throughout the whole thing. Also don't have to wear out your unload system of your grain bin. So just gravity flows down into this drag conveyor. I'm really excited for that actually, really excited. And this is how it's tying together. So that will come from this bin over here and it drops into our drag conveyor that takes grain away from the pits. So when we're hauling the bin out, it uh, goes to the overhead. Hello. Hi, can you pull that and hook that? Good. So what do you think? I think this turned out pretty well. So the plan in the future is how we kind of designed this and the reason we chose this location for this bin was to the south to keep drag conveyors cheaper, less drag conveyors needed. So in the future, we'll build more 60 foot bends because that's the size we like, diameter, otherwise it gets kind of um, complicated with uh, floors and the sweeps get really big and expensive. So we like 60 foot diameter. Um, so anyways, in the future, we're gonna go east of here, which means then the future drag conveyor will be coming through here and will dump into this one. So one drag conveyor per bin. This drag conveyor will have the opportunity to have two dumped into it. So kind of building in phases here. Am I uh, the only one that sees a problem here? Okay. Yeah, it got kind of tight. Like not physically possible to put that shield on? It's kind of tight. Kind of tight. <laughs> it's like they just put the bend floor in here. They do not have the head connected yet to the drag mm -hmm. conveyor. This is the wet bend. Um, we actually upgraded from a round pipe to a U-trough, more bushels per hour, with two dryers going in 16 to 20% moisture. We were out doing 6,500 bushel an hour uh, unload, so we went to a, U, a Brock U trough uh, unload. This is nice. And we, we don't dry 6,500 bushels an hour, but they have to be filled in a certain amount of time. And if it don't refill it fast enough, the dryer shuts off, thinks it's out of corn. So that's why we upgraded this unload. Plus, it's a bigger band, had to upgrade everything. Can we do a three way rock, paper, scissors? I was gonna rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yes. One, two, three, decide. Right? Yeah. Rock, paper. Oh, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> we do a practice. <laughs> yeah. Which one wins no matter what? None of them. <laughs> Ready? Hey, I covered you. you what's this? Paper. Crowd, is this paper or scissors? It's flat. It doesn't well, matter if it's upside down. Like that. That wasn't Well, then, let's go. Sweet, I'm out. Oh, I won. Oh, okay. Dad! He always loses! <laughs> Every time! <laughs> All right, guys. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.